Welcome everyone to the ITS Michigan webinar series. And we're continuing along with our, our webinars until we're able to meet again in person. So we're excited to have another great topic today that we'll go through. Um, just real quick, I'm Jeff Feeney with ITS Michigan and we have a couple minor ground rules. Uh, please try to stay on mute if you're not speaking and utilize the Zoom chat along the way if you have questions. Uh, we'll be monitoring those and then we will leave some time at the end uh, to open it up for questions so we can have everyone come off the mute at the end and, and ask questions as they come up. And so with that, I would like to welcome Hassan Awali as our presenter today. Uh, so quick background on Hassan. He's a, a driven ambassador of Dan Law's Video X platform. And as an ITS project manager, Hassan is responsible for overseeing the company's V2X initiatives nationwide. And so Hassan joined Dan Law in 2019 and brings a rich background in ITS and traffic engineering, along with a master's degree in transportation and highway systems from Wayne State University. Hassan has hands-on experience developing traffic signal preemption applications from both traffic engineering and V2X systems engineering perspectives. And he hopes to drive the, the mobility revolution by bridging the gap between traffic management and connected vehicle technology. So Hassan, welcome. Thanks for joining us today. And the floor is yours to get started. I think you're still on mute. Okay, you hear me now? Yep, there you go, perfect. All right, thank you, Jeff, for the introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I hope you all are doing well and staying safe during uh, these difficult times. Uh, I would like to thank you uh, all for joining me today as I will be uh, uh, talking about the VDX uh, traffic uh, signal priority and uh, preemption applications. So, uh, to start off, uh, because I noticed that um, some of the attendees here are just uh, our traffic engineers, uh, just like me. So I thought maybe I could start with a overview of the VDX application, and then from a bird view, and then like we um, deep uh, dive deeper as we move forward. So uh, again, since I come from a, uh, a traffic engineering background, uh, I will kick. Uh, kick off the presentation uh, with uh, the bird view that I was talking about. And then for starters, I would like to say that the preemption application is a vehicle to infrastructure uh, VDI technology, which is a subnet uh, of uh, vehicle to everything or vehicle to X technology. Uh, as, you, as you know, the vehicle, the VTX enables vehicles to exchange uh, real time location and heading info with uh, other vehicles and infrastructure. Um, uh, other components that are a uh, subnet of the VDX technology could be um, v to, V2V, which is vehicle to vehicle communications, V2P, which is vehicle to pedestrian, and there are some other um, types of um, uh, uh, components or subnets like uh, V2D, which is vehicle to device, and V2G, which is vehicle to grid. So again, since I come from an engineering background, and I'm sure some of you do as well, uh, I'm going to introduce the, um, uh, the cell phone analogy uh, to you, which helped me a lot understanding and differentiating between um, the traditional preemption system and the VDAX preemption system. So by looking at those, uh, uh, those cell phones, uh, imagine the old cell phone, uh, old style cell phone is a traditional preemption system. Calling, the calling feature is the uh, preemption uh, application and the cell phone itself is all the devices needed to make the system work. Now, as you can see, uh, this is the old style cell phone and then you have the smartphone. So both the, smart, the, the smartphone and uh, the old style cell phone uh, serve the same purpose, right? Which is uh, the, the providing a preemption, uh, traffic preemption uh, application. But with the smartphone, which is the VTX traffic, uh, which is the VTX traffic uh, preemption uh, application, 
you're not only having a preemption application, but you also have an access to, let's say, an app store. So the app store is all the applications that, you know, like when you go to your app store in your phone, you can download multiple uh, applications and then you can use uh, other applications like, for example, Facebook, Snapchat, whatever you want to call it, along with the calling feature, right? So if you have, what I'm trying to say here, if you have a fully equipped VitaX environment, uh, then you are not only uh, having a preemption application, but you can have access at the same time to other applications. So uh, by, uh, by let's, let's assume here that this page is a, uh, serve as the, um, let's say the app store right, of, of, of your cell phone. So from that app store, you can have access to all of these uh, uh, applications, which you can also have a traffic accident avoidance application, remote traffic management, highway uh, road tolling, carbon emission, public transit management, and faster emergency response. So, for example, let's say we are on this app store and then we decided to click on the safety uh, application tab. You can have these applications all in one system. When, once you have an OBU and let's say RSU or other VDEX components installed, you can have at the same time, uh, for example, you can see, uh, you, can, you, can, you can show the SPAT message uh, on your dashboard or on your HMI. You can also have the uh, pedestrian awareness application. You can also have the weather uh, application and construction zone, forward collision warning, and then the, the signal preemption. There are multiple, uh, there are numerous types of applications that you can also get, let's say, as a, uh, as a free uh, with the system that you have. So today we are going to be talking about the preemption. Uh, application and as a as a uh, um, uh, as a safety veto application and we are going to talk about the traffic signal priority application as a um, uh, mobility veto application so uh, as you can see here the uh, traffic signal preemption is defined as the transfer of normal operation of a traffic control signal to a special control mode of operation this is defined by the MUTCD um, this system is commonly used uh, for fire uh, apparatuses um, because you know their size and high speed makes them less able to pass through uh, an intersection without uh, the aid of preemption um, the signal preemption controls the movement in favor of a higher importance vehicle. Uh, preempting the traffic signal uh, will, could um, uh, force off uh, the phases on the side street and may also force off uh, pedestrian walk and cl clearance intervals uh, to serve the, 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 emergency, uh, the emergency vehicle as fast as possible. On the other hand, uh, the signal priority is, an, uh, is defined by the FHWA as an operational, operational strategy that is applied to reduce the delay transit vehicle experiencing at a traffic signal. Uh, in another word, uh, I would say the, the traffic uh, signal priority is another form of preemption, but much less aggressive than preemption, where it doesn't force off phases, but it could extend green, it could uh, altering phase sequence, it could truncate a red phase uh, with taking into consideration the importance of, of not interrupting progression between adjacent uh, intersection and, and does not uh, force the controller to go into a, uh, a transition period. So um, Going back to uh, the signal preemption uh, application, signal preemption application, there are multiple technologies that have been had been used to uh, trigger the application. You have the light, sound, pavement loops, push buttons. Sometimes you have a uh, a fire station close to an intersection. Uh, fire, uh, the fireman just 
push a button and then drive out the driver driveway and it triggers the uh, the preemption system and there is the last one is the radio transmission vdx which is what are we going to talk about uh, you're going to notice through my presentation that i will uh, focus only on the uh, uh, traffic signal uh, preemption application not the priority and you're going to see why but by the end of the, the presentation so here uh, this is, I'm going to show you how the system works from a V2X uh, stand of point. Um, here we have this intersection. Step one, the uh, fire truck is approaching the uh, intersection and it's equipped with a, uh, an OBU, uh, 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 equipped with an OBU. Then what, what happens is, uh, you have an RSU. The RSU is um, installed at the intersection, and what it does is start sending uh, WSA or ser Wave Service Provider. The, the WSA is a way for the RSU to say, "Hey, uh, I have the ability to serve a preemption application," and here is the PSID associated with this application. The PSID uh, is, or the provider service identifier, is a unique value that serves as a, um, let's say, as a uh, cell phone number, okay? Uh, going back to my analogy. So the cell phone number is, where I can't call you if I don't have your cell phone number. So the RSU is shouting, hey, I have a preemption application. This is my cell phone number. Give me a call. Along with the WSA, it broadcasts a map message, uh, and this map message includes lane geometry and uh, 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 signal group ID. So once it sends the WSA and the map message, um, the OBU hears the WSA and starts going through a checklist. Uh, or, for example, are the triggers on? And the triggers could be the light bar could be the siren, could be a combination of both. Uh, uh, do I do the, the does the uh, OBU meets all the parameters? Then after that, it will send uh, an SS, SRM message or service request message. The service request message is a message that uh, includes the expected time of arrival, the expected uh, expected uh, approach or lane of entry, expected approach or lane of exit, and the type of request, uh, which whether if it's uh, preemption or uh, priority. So it sends the SRM to the uh, RSU. The RSU receives this message, translate it, and then send it to the traffic controller via SNMP V1. So inside the traffic controller, we have uh, the, the preemption, uh, we have to program the preemption uh, call itself. And you know, the programming the preemption uh, is, uh, can be uh, programmed or defined based on the traffic engineering, engineering recommendation, you know, like this approach should get this much of green and so on and so forth. Uh, but in order to the traffic control, uh, to the RSU, to communicate the correct uh, uh, preemption call to the traffic controller, it has to know something called OID or object ID. The OID is also something, um, let's say it's like the cell phone of, of the uh, command of, or the preemption command. So once the RSU knows the OID of this uh, preemption command in the controller, it will be programmed in the RSU along with the um, IP address of the traffic controller. And then in the traffic controller, you, we will program the uh, IP address of the RSU to establish communication between, the, between those two devices. So the RSU will send the command uh, request to the traffic controller via uh, Ethernet. And then the traffic controller will do its magic and it will see whether if it's the call is granted or not. Either way, uh, the RSU will send another command to pull the, the, the decision of the traffic controller uh, from the traffic controller back to the RSU and then translate it back and send it to the, to the OBU as an um, SSM message or, or uh, uh, 
signal uh, status message. So here, which is shown in step, yeah. So here, so it sends the, the, the SSM message to the traffic controller, to the, sorry, to the uh, fire truck. And then on the fire truck, the OBU, uh, there is something called a HMR, human machine interface. It will show a, uh, uh, on the screen that the, the traffic signal is, or the preemption call is granted or not. Um, and if it's granted, the, the fire truck will go through the intersection and this, and then the, the, uh, the process will complete. So basic, this is basically how the uh, preemption application works in a VTX environment. Now, uh, I hope it was clear. And if you have any questions, let's leave them to the end. Uh, but now, uh, going back to the cell phone analogy, uh, since the VTX techno technology is the smartphone that has access to lots of apps, it's also smart enough to multitask. So again, by looking at the HMI, which I just showed here, uh, the driver can also see a live signal counter on the HMI. For example, if the signal ahead counting down uh, red phase, for example, once the request is granted, the, the driver can see the counter is going down from let's say 35 seconds worth of thread to, send to, to uh, 10 seconds. Uh, you can also broadcast uh, alerts to the surrounding vehicles or to the surrounding connected vehicles. Uh, a pop-up will show up uh, on their HMI saying that, hey, there is a nearby uh, emergency vehicle, be careful. So if we're talking, let's say, a whole first responders preemption uh, solution, this solution can include uh, two types of application, the traffic signal preemption as a, uh, uh, as a V2I application, and then a vehicle alert system to alert the vehicle surrounding this fire truck uh, as a uh, B2B or V2I application. Now, everything I just mentioned about the traffic preemption is exactly similar to the priority application as a concept, but there are some differences. The differences here are uh, the vehicle type must be defined as a special vehicle, not emergency vehicle in the SRM message. Uh, the priority app must be programmed in the RSU. Uh, both RSU and OBU must use the same PSID of the priority app to be able to communicate between each other. Uh, the priority OID uh, must be programmed in the RSU to be able to send the, uh, the the request uh, or the priority request to the traffic control controller. And you know, the traffic control controller must be programmed to serve uh, the priority calls. So this is basically how the, uh, the traffic preemption and priority uh, works from a VDX stand of point. Um, and in, in, in one of our, our previous um, uh, pilots, uh, We've heard some great testimonies from um, the fire chief that it served them. It served the, the preemption, the VDX preemption system served um, served them very well, and they're looking to retrofit the entire team, uh, the entire uh, uh, fire engines with this uh, uh, technology. Um, some of the advantages that I want to talk about when you're talking. Uh, VTX technology uh, is that it has a farther range uh, and it could, could also reach to 1500 meters, which is farther than most uh, of the uh, technologies out there, but maybe similar to the IR. Uh, however, the IR cannot go through obstructions, uh, but radio can go, can do. Uh, more specific, uh, and it can be more specific, um, request can be sent uh, per approach. And for example here, going back to our preemption uh, system, let's say the intersection has eight movement and each movement is separated by a load switch. So if, if every load switch or every movement has its own uh, preemption call and the traffic controller, uh, the, 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 the fire truck can 
call the preemption per lane. So let's say the fire truck is taking the northbound left. Uh, the, the, far, the, the OBU can send a request only for the northbound left movement. What will happen is all the intersection will go on red except the northbound left. Now this one could be not very uh, uh, accurate because uh, you know sometimes fire trucks keep like jumping between lanes and go use the center lane to pass through vehicles. Uh, but this uh, application could be useful if the, uh, uh, if the let's say the map or the of, or um, the route of, of the fire truck is programmed into uh, there is a way like to program the map into the OBU and the RSU. This way, the OBU will always know where the vehicle is going, and then it's it's only going to send request per the lane that the fire truck is on. Uh, so this is one of the advantages and also the you can get detailed uh, real-time information um, Just like you know the uh, spat showing the spat message on the um, uh, Dashboard which is like you can see a, a, tra a Traffic signal which with a counter that shows Green yellow red and this is the time you know like this is the counter the counter of this phase and it will go to next phase after this much of seconds. Uh, so these are the advantages. Uh, also here I have some um, corner cases that also I want to discuss with you. And these corner cases, you know, similar to, uh, because it's an evolving uh, uh, technology, it's, let's say it's something similar to something we know, which is uh, the traffic controller. So, in the back, uh, uh, in the old days, the traffic control controller had only uh, fixed timing. And then, you know, by the time um, technology started evolving, people noticed or engineers noticed that uh, uh, the traffic controller is serving or wasting, let's say, uh, time on side street, which is not needed. So uh, researchers started and they wanted to find a way to cut the time on the side street to make sure you know that the, the network is always uh, act, um, acting on its best uh, efficient way. So you know the, uh, the, the, the detection was introduced and then you, you had the uh, semi-actuation and the fully actuation system. So it's, it's similar here uh, in, the, in the traffic pre or VTX traffic preemption. Um, you would have scenarios that uh, the uh, application won't act as efficient as needed, but there is studies to, uh, needed to, to, to figure out a way, ways to make this, uh, to enhance uh, the, the, uh, the application itself. So for example here, if you have a queue of, of, uh, of two vehicles, let's say, or three vehicles, so once the, the fire truck is approaching the intersection and sending the SRM message, what could happen? Uh, there is a possibility that the, uh, the, uh, the fire truck will approach the intersection and the vehicles are still there or they didn't clear the intersection. So also it will create a little bit, you know, uh, a backup or uh, it's not going to be as efficient as, as possible. So there is some uh, studies that says that should the queued vehicles be addressed uh, in the process of sending an SRM message, should the SRM, should the RSU um, talk to the surrounding vehicles and then start giving, starting the, the preemption application earlier to make sure that the vehicles is clearing the intersection by the time the fire truck is approaching. So this is, uh, these are, this is one of the corner cases that is being studied. Uh, the second corner case, is once you have uh, two emergency vehicles approaching the intersection at the same time and they're both sending SRM messages, which one should I serve first? Should, should the service between, uh, should the service be like um, uh, on, on the basis of FIFO, which is first in, first out, or based on priority? Um, for me, I would say, it could be a combination of both because if there is a rail uh, crossing cl close to the intersection, I would give 
the train a higher priority because it's it's hard to stop the trains and then maybe you would have um, um, the fire truck and emergency vehicles as uh, and the second priority but they work on a FIFO situation uh, and then maybe lastly the uh, the police cars so there is also a debate on what way should be implement, implemented in them um, to address like what is mo the most efficient way to address uh, the situation. Um, so this is the second corner case. And also, you know, the third corner case is once you have uh, two calls, a priority call and preemption call, this, this so the answer here is known because the, uh, for the most important reason is uh, Preemption is always an emergency priority is an on emergency call and also at the same time uh, The traffic control controller won't accept a priority call over a preemption call um, So these are the uh, Let's say the questions that are going around and some people are asking whether the um, the RSU should have the capability of having of given the discussion of which vehicle has the priority or the uh, or the traffic controller um, so yeah these are the corner cases and you know since we uh, just addressed two prominent scenarios with unknown solution I just wanted to say before the end of the presentation that download is the uh, forefront of the uh, Vita X innovation we are creating solutions that will enable the future of um, mobility and these are the, the, the products that we um, we sell we have the skylink through glass antennas with, with the shark fin which act as a the the link of communication between the obu and the rcu and then you have the obu which collects real-time uh, data uh, and then, as you can see, also the RSU, which uh, also communicate with the infrastructure and the surrounding vehicles. And lastly, the driver visual display, which is the HMI that shows all the alerts and notifications uh, on, the, uh, uh, on the screen. Uh, so this is like an entire solution or an ecosystem that can be provided with download. And with that, I would like to say thank you. And if you have any questions, please uh, go ahead. Excellent. Thanks, Hassan. And good folks, uh, please take yourself off of mute and uh, we are open for questions. Um, Hassan, I can kind of kick us off with a initial question. Um, looks like you guys have been doing some pilot deployments and working on sort of uh, ironing out some of the edge cases and, and things like that. Are there any live uh, uh, setups that are out there that jurisdictions may be using today? Yeah, we have a live setup uh, now in, uh, in Macomb County. It's one of the, let's say, closest here in Michigan. So uh, it's a priority, it's a preemption uh, setup that we have in the city of Sterling Heights. Okay. What do you see as some of the, the bigger hurdles for, for this to become mainstream and, and start being adopted by uh, different jurisdictions? Um, I think the biggest hurdle is uh, the, uh, the market penetration. You know, you need to have, uh, to, in order to have a very efficient system, the, most of the vehicles, like a big chunk of the vehicles must be equipped with the VDX technology to be able to perform in its best way. Hassan, uh, this is Tony from City of Detroit. I had a quick question. So um, we have, you know, 500 or so police cars, uh, a number of different fire trucks, and and uh, the ambulances and all that. So it could add up quite a bit. Um, have you guys found like a quick solution to retrofit existing vehicles with OBUs, um, so to speak, or what is the general um, approach to to doing so for big fleets? Um. So, uh, for example, in the pilot that we are doing in, uh, uh, in Macomb County, uh, we are retrofitting the, the fire apparat apparatus with the OBU uh, that has the application, the preemption application. 
and uh, the intersection with the RSU, which also has the preemption application, and then they both can communicate with, with each other. So I would say we are able to retrofit uh, vehicles with, uh, with OBUs to be able to be connected. In fact, the, the, the whole point of, of, the, of the OBU or, uh, here is to retrofit vehicles that ha don't have the technology of connected vehicles make them be able to be connected. I hope I answered your question. I'm not sure. Yes, thank you. Okay. Hi, Hassan. This is Gary Petrovich with the Road Commission of Brooklyn County. Um, you noted in there about, uh, we're like looking at doing something similar to this in snowplow trucks. You put that under priority and not preempt. Um, our view of that is that it's a snowplow truck. If you ask the public, they're always behind. So they always need to be, um, they need to be given a preemption going into it. So what, what's your, I'm just curious of what your thought was on what or how you came to that. So uh, that, that'll, de that'll depend on the client, I would say the client need. We can either have it uh, as a priority or as a preemption uh, uh, application. Uh, some of one of our clients wanted it to act as a uh, priority call because um, um, since you know like in, in high snow locations there will be always uh, snow plows moving around and if you always give them the preemption uh, capable capability uh, it will I would say uh, Kind of maybe mess up the the progression on the uh, on the on your on the traffic network, which will lead to higher delays and uh, uh, backups. So uh, you can have it either way, depending on the client need, and that's why I when I was discussing the preemption application at the end, I said uh, the, the the preemption and the priority has the same setup. If there, it's only a programming features that need to be changed to make the vehicle uh, act as a priority call instead of preemption. So yeah, my answer to you can be both ways, depending on your needs. Thank you. I, I have a question. Oh, go ahead. Okay, uh, sorry. This is Nick Rippleding. I'm with SRF Consulting Group. Uh, we're in Minneapolis, actually. Uh, one question I have is about how you verify that a vehicle is a emergency vehicle or you know they are who they say they are. I assume there's some type of certificate system in place to to do that verification. Can can you talk about how that works? Yeah, so uh, every, um, every call that leaves the OBU uh, comes with a, uh, the PSID. Uh, the PSID, which, as I mentioned, it's like the cell phone of the application. And you, ha you also have the type of call that is needed, which is whether it's preemption or priority. This is, would be um, uh, certified. Uh, there is a certification system that certify this message to make sure that it is you know a valid message and then it goes to the to the rsu so the rsu uh, would be designed in either way it can either accept unsigned messages or it can accept signed messages so if there is let's say uh, a message leaving a vehicle uh, let's say it's not a uh, uh, an emergency car someone is trying to you know like have the application system in, in his vehicle. If the, if, if the message leaving his vehicle is not signed, the RSU won't accept it. And therefore it won't go through the traffic controller and trigger a preemption call. So did I answer your question here? Yeah, I, think, I mean, I guess the question was about the getting the certificates, like what's the process for, for that or, you know, is that, who, who runs that? Uh, it's, it's a third party entity that runs the certificate. You, would, you, um, you go, you contact them and then you give them the list of PSIDs, which is the applications that you are um, looking to certify. And then they will send you the certification which you can install uh, on the RSU and the OBU. I believe the certificate expires every, I think every other week or every week. 
and it renew itself uh, weekly or bi-weekly. I'm not really sure on that, but this is how the certificate works. Okay, thank you. No problem. Hi, this is uh, Ted Tadler with Interval Blue. Um, hey, we're the. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Um, this may be a Dan Law specific question, um, or it may be an industry question. I guess that's uh, that's up to you. But is the intent um, either by Dan Law or for most RSU OEM to include the application for preemption and signal priority on the RSUs? Um, as a, something that's included automatically, like most already do right now with MAP and SPAT, or is that intended to be like, well, infrastructure owner operators have to pay extra licenses to use these applications. Um, you know, same goes for infrastructure owner operators who may already have DAN law units. Is this something that they can begin using out of the box, or uh, would there be extra purchases involved with DAN law? Um, I would say this is, this is a sales question. I'm not pretty sure I could have an answer for that. I don't know if anyone from Download can answer this question. Hi, Hassan. This is Andrew Donaldson. Um, each contract would be negotiated separately. And so it could or could not be according to the customer needs. So Hassan is kind of right. It's, it's definitely a, a sales and contracting issue that would be between our customers and ourselves. Okay. Um, hi, this is Yes Nenshaha with MDOT. So I guess just to clarify the understanding is, so the Dan Law has both the OBU and the RSU and then the application built up. Is it, does that application um, live on the RSU? So like if you buy the package to have it on there, I mean, and then you would have to sit down with the owner operator to kind of determine like for snowplow trucks, do you want them to be, you know, um, priority or preemption? So like you kind of have to do it case by case or by location actually. Yes. So I'm just curious how that whole thing works. Yeah, so we sell, we sell the, the entire uh, solution in the OBU, RSU and the application also. Uh, we, usually sit with the uh, with the owner and then ask them what type of uh, application they're looking for and whether they want it to be as a preemption or priority uh, and then we uh, programmed it based on that okay so the so with the application so is it like i guess is it like a a char a subscription or is it like you buy it and and then all those modifications are sort of included or like are those all extras so uh, the preemption and priority application they're kind of the same application they're just like some parameters that you need to change to make sure that it's going through as a priority or as a preemption application um, so I also like not, not sure because it's, it's also a sales uh, question. I'm not sure if it's like based on a subscription or we just like program it based on the requirements of uh, uh, the, uh, the, the client itself. Um, so I'm, I'm not, I don't have like a, a clear answer to that question, but all I can say that the application comes uh, as can serve both uh, purposes mm -hmm. and it can be programmed e uh, either way. Okay, I understand. I was just trying to figure out, how, I guess, what's the, I would imagine it would have to be some sort of um, cost because I, with what the modifications or changes expected. So the modification, I would say it would be like an engineering support. So if you, if you're looking to do some changes or some parameters that need to be changed, you know, it's gonna be based on engineering hours or engineering support that would be provided along with the contract. Okay, thank you. Hey, Hassan, this is uh, Kian from AECOM. 
uh, I'm sorry, I missed the first portion of your presentation. So is this RC you refer to, is this DSRC or uh, uh, it could support of uh, the zero based solution? And also questions, uh, can you explain a little bit about the, your downloads approach moving forward? Are you guys still gonna offer a separate RCU for zero based solution or it could be a version which is a, a dual support for the both? So the application is technology agnostic. It can work on uh, DSRC and CV uh, to X uh, technologies. Um, the RSUs we have the we have a DSRC RSU, we have a CV to X RSU, and we have a, a dual mode RSU, which is uh, uh, DSRC and CV to X at the same time. Thank you. No problem. Oh, one more question about, so uh, MDAD has, we have quite a bit of DMI units, uh, DSRC units deployed. So if we wanted to have this um, signal priority and preemption application, oh, what's needed to be done so that it could be added on there? Is it something over the air that could be upgraded? So it's now has the application on it? Um. I can I can check with with the team on that and maybe get back to you on an, uh, on that on, on an email if you like. Um, sure. Yeah. This is this is Scott uh, from Danlaw. So yeah, we we generally are normally able to update the software on the units in the in the field, um, but I guess that depends on the you know, the installation, how things were set up. Other questions from the group? So I have one other question. I know you talked about some of the conflict if there's two preemption vehicles kind of at the same time or preemption priority. Do you see it staying as those two buckets or could it be broken down further as technology develops to assign almost preemption and then you have different priority level vehicles within that preemption category? Yeah, I guess you can have uh, different priority levels and the preemption. So, for example, uh, one thing is, you know, the fire trucks, um, they're not, not always going in a, uh, like a fire call, you know, like actual fire calls. Sometimes they go to support a fire, uh, ambulance vehicles or police cars when there's like accidents. They act like as a barrier, let's say. So there could be maybe two levels of priority here. If there is a fire call, then they would have the highest priority. If, there is a, if they are going as a support, their call could be a secondary or, or lower priority. This way, they, you can serve the, the intersection in, in a more efficient way, I would say. Excellent. All right, any other questions from the group? As long as they are coding, so if the fire truck or emergency apparatus is coding, it, how would you be able to differentiate the type of call that they're responding to, whether it be support or a priority for their immediate services? Uh, can you ask your question one more time? So in, in the last question, you brought up kind of binning it into two separate buckets. Mm -hmm. You stated that it could, it could work as a preemption or a priority. However, if a fire apparatus is responding, they're going to respond coding lights and sirens. Right. So how, how would you be able to differentiate a preemption versus a priority if it's tied to them activating their lights and sirens? Right. So to, to trigger the, the preemption application, uh, you would need a at least one or two triggers to make sure that the application is working. And for example, it could be the siren and, and the light bar at the same time. So maybe by adding a third trigger, which could be a button in the, in the vehicle, uh, saying that this is the highest priority call. When you, once you have three um, triggers, then it, would, uh, it, it, will, it will act as a highest priority call. If you have two trigger, triggers, it will act 
uh, as also a pre preemption call, but with a lower, let's say, uh, level of priority. Alrighty, last call for questions. Um, just, um, I guess, a quick, um, for the um, OBU, like what is the, I guess, the HMI look like for the fire trucks or police officer? I've attended some meetings and the, some of them were concerned about how that is displayed to them. Like if it's just a noise, thing, then they couldn't hear it over their sirens. I'm, I'm curious if you had any pictures or anything to share. What does that look like to them? What is that? Um, basically? Yeah, so the HMI that we're using is just, it's like a, a small, for the fire trucks, like a small bar that sits on the dashboard. Um, and it shows a green, if it shows a green color, that means is the signal is granted or the request is granted. And if red color, that means the request is not granted. So it's okay. just like, yeah. yeah. It's, it's just the colors. There's no, yes. nothing else. Okay. But uh, I'd like to add that there are many other options available um, from audio, visual, cell phones, tablets, um, PCs in the cab. Um, there is a huge variety of HMIs available for the system. It very much depends on what the user wants. Um, for example, in New York City, uh, it was audible only, and that was a mandate by the project. Um, in the fire trucks, uh, that we, it was stipulated that it needed to be incredibly simple and positioned so that the driver was not able to see the HMI. Only the person in the bus seat was able to see the HMI. And we've been requested police for police vehicles to integrate into the existing um, computer system in the police vehicle. So it is an incredibly flexible system. And the HMI can only okay. be anything you want it to be. Okay. Hassan, this is uh, Brandon Steph. It's uh, good to see your face again. Hey, Brandon. But uh, I was curious, you mentioned a queue clearing before for the approaching emergency vehicle. Um, does the RSU tie in at all to any detection or any of the detection present to identify how far back the queue is? And is that queue clearing variable at all? If the queue is large, it enacts it earlier. If the queue is small, it only enacts a small portion of time. So, so as I mentioned, this is, this is still a coroner case. It's still under um, uh, the research, let's say. Um, there is no de definite answer for it as, as of now, but this is one of the ways that if we can detect the queue length, uh, how can we make the, the preemption call start, let's say, kicks earlier to make sure that the intersection is, is cleared by the time the fire truck is approaching. But uh, as of now, I, I, there's, we don't, there's no um, way, let's say, to, to to predict the the, uh, the length of the queue at the intersection. Okay, thank you. Yep. All righty. Well, Hassan, thank you, and thanks to the to you and the Dan Law team for a great presentation. Appreciate you spending the time over the lunch hour to, to inform the ITS Michigan user group and uh, appreciate uh, the time today. Thank you very much. Excellent. Well, and thank you everyone for joining. Um, we, are, we'll, we will be continuing our series. So we have another uh, upcoming presentation that you should get notification soon um, in the next couple of weeks, probably about a month out. So be on the lookout for that and make sure you get registered. So thanks everyone. Thank Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good have a good day. Thanks. Thank you.